Welcome back to the Ibu YouTube channel. Today's class, we learn how to make this beautiful bishop collar. We normally use this round and total neckline, and I've been getting a lot of requests on how to draft and cut this. So I just decided to do a dedicated video on this so that we can make reference to it. If this is something you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. To draft this basic color, this is actually a highly requested video because we've been doing, we've been working with bishop colors a lot on the channel, especially for turtlenecks, and then I've been getting a lot of requests on how to draft it. So I just decided to do a dedicated video so that henceforth, anytime we we'll make a tutorial on bishop colors, we can just refer to this video. So to do this, I'll be drafting this on my gum stay. So this is a gum stay. You can see this is the shiny part where the gum is and this is the other side so i'm just going to be putting this on fold now and then we'll get our measurement so to get our measurements you bring out your neckline that's where you're adding the bishop collar to so this is just a basic but this is a simple blouse of three inches by three inches for front and three inches by one inch for back neckline so now you just take your tape pruner and measure around the neckline to get the measurement you'll be working with so now after measuring around this neckline i have around 17 and a half inches that's the full neckline i remember i said we are putting this on fold by two so it means we are going to be dividing that full neckline to get the actual neckline we're working with. So if we have seven and a half, and I said to add one inch for seam allowance, that's going to be eighteen and a half. But you can just round it up to nineteen and trim off the excess. So now putting nineteen on fold is going to give me around nineteen, around nine and a half. Okay, so I'll just measure what I have here. This should do. So now the first thing I'm going to do now is to rule my starting point. And then this place is quite straight, so I can just take this upper part here as my starting point. After getting my starting point, from that starting point, I'm going to measure 4 inch downwards. Because we're going to make a curve so that the bishop collar can relax well. Remember, it's following a neckline and the neck is round. So you cannot just cut it straight like that. So now we have that mark there. So now after making that mark, the next thing is for you to make the length of your bishop collar. So it depends on how high or how low you want. That's the height of the collar. So it can be one inch, it can be one and a half, it can be two inches, it can be two and a half, depending on what you want. But I think I'll just be working with a collar of one and a half inches. So from this point where I stop my four inches, I'm going to measure one and a half inches. And then I'm going to roll it into a straight line. I don't actually need this straight line, but I want this to be obvious for us to see. So now that is the length of the collar that we are working with. So now from this fold point, the next thing I'm going to do now is to measure in one inch. Yeah, so this is just like a guide. So after measuring in my one inch, I'm going to take my curved ruler now. And then I'm going to connect it in such a way that I'm going to be having like a curve here. Like I said, remember we are trying to add this to a curved part and we don't want it too sharp. So the curve is going to start from this one inch that I measured. So now to get the actual measurements you're working with, the measurement of the neckline we're adding this color to which is nine and a half inches on fold so i'm going to be measuring it from here so if you're measuring a curve you know, remember you cannot just put our tape like this so you just place your tape like this now and measure out your nine and a half inches that you're working with okay so you can do this also on the lower part and then because this lower part is actually where we are going to be adding to your neckline sorry so i'm going to be sewing it the lower part is going to be the widest part and that's the part we are going to be adding to our neckline so this measurement needs to be taken on the lower part and then here you just measure your one inch and place your cuff so after placing your cuff like this you measure out your actual round neck measurement which is nine and a half so I measured the nine and a half and I have nine and a half around here. 
okay so after having it there you take your curve now and then you join it okay see what i have there so now that i have that there i need to complete my measurement so remember we're using a color of one and a half inches height so now from there we'll start measuring our one and a half inches so i have one and a half inches there one and a half inches i'm just going to measure that round and then i'll connect it okay and this here is already one and a half inches so now using my curve driller again i'm going to take that together and then i'll connect it so you should have something of one and a half inches height all through see what i have so here i'm just going to close this and cut out my collar So you don't have to use one and a half inches like I did. You can make yours one inch, two inches, depending on what you're actually going for. Okay, so now after cutting it out, you can see what we have, that it is not straight. It is just a bit curved like that. So the next thing now is to take your fabric now. You can actually gum this to your fabric. Remember it's the gum stay and this is the gum part of it. So you can actually take your hot iron now and gum this on your fabric. Okay, that's the wrong side of your fabric. You gum it and then you had half a inch seam allowance for sewing it around the fabric. Okay, so after gumming this to your fabric, now you just take your tape now and measure half half inch or whatever it is that you sew it. So again, I'll be using a marker so that you can see it. So you just measure that around. You can actually eyeball it if you can. And if you cannot, you just take your marker now and then measure it all around on both the upper part and the lower part and then you cut it out. So now you're going to be cutting two of these. And it should be unfold against each other because you are going to use just one as lining and then one as our main fabric to turn them out. So I'm just marking my allowance. I'll connect it and then I'll cut it out. Okay, so I've connected this. If you are doing yours, do not do this with a marker. I'm using a marker so that we can see what we are doing very well. So I had the allowance strand, and if you notice, I did not have the allowance on this side because when I measured it, I already had one inch seam allowance for that part. So I don't need allowance. So I'm just going to be putting this on fold now so that I can cut the lining and main fabric together, and then I'm going to cut this out. So I just place the fabric against each other, right side facing right there, and then head it to the pin. And don't forget that you gum your interface, that's your gum stay to the wrong side of your fabric. So now cutting this now, I'm going to be cutting both the lining and the main fabric together. Then after cutting it, I'll go ahead now and sew the upper part. That's the one that's going to be resting on the neck, not the one that we are going to be sewing to our neckline so i'll sew which is this part so i'll sew it close and turn it neatly and iron before fixing the lower part around the neckline i hope you get that okay so this is cut out now and this is the lining part of the fabric so now like i was saying this lower this this is shorter if you measure this now what you're going to get here is shorter okay so i'm measuring this and i have around 16 inches and by the time you measure this now you have your actual measurement of 19 inches that we started with okay so see what we have here we have 19 inches and we have 16 here so this 16 here is the one that comes up 
to the neckline to the neck area and then this long one here is the one we're going to be sewing to our neckline that we measured which is this so now what we're going to do now is to sew close this upper part so i'm going to sew it from here then sew it around now sew it and then turn it from here before i join this to my neckline okay so now i'm gonna have to sew this as you can see i hope you can see my seam line that's why i use the yellow thread so i sew it close here and then i sew it around here also so i'm going to remove this now and then you can notch it because this is a curve so you can notch it so that it can relax so and then now you turn it out so here now before sewing it close you can actually so we don't have power right now so i'll kind of be doing this manually so here instead of sewing it close you can just fold in your seam allowance here and then you iron it down so that it will be easier for you when you want to turn it but i don't have power so i'm just going to be doing this manually and that is why i'm going to notch it very well so that it can relax for me and then give me something neat so now i'm notching it around anytime you're working with a curved surface like this you should always notch it so that it can open up and then relax by the time you are sewing it you can also trim off excess allowance if you don't need it anymore so now i'm turning this out so I'm just going to trim off the allowance that I have here also. So if you don't actually sew with half an inch, you can just leave two and, uh, quarter of an inch allowance. So it depends on how much allowance you sew with. So once you notch it, it's going to open up better. So you can see that I'm even yet to iron this now. And my cuff is relaxing very well. So this is what my cuff is looking like now. Assuming I have power, I'll just take it straight to the ironing table now and then iron it. So once you iron it flat, this lower part now is what you're going to be sewing to your neckline and your bishop collar is ready. So you can see how it just fits into it like this and your collar is ready. Okay, so before I go, I just want to explain to us, I've pinned this now to my neckline. As you can see so here now on the on the one that is going to be on your front area you can actually leave it straight now or you just sew it in a curved part like in a curved way like this so that it gives you that smooth curve by the time you sew it in so i just want to mention that to us before i go so that if you see a curve there you're not going to be confused so by the time you sew it in form of a curve like this and you turn it out you can see what you have that is slightly curved it's no longer straight so you can do this depending on what you want okay so this have been sewn around the neckline now and this is what we have this is the wrong side and this is the right side of the blouse okay so see this curved part that we have remember i said i've not ironed this so one time you iron it it will even like it will lie it will lie very flat for you and then you're going to like the outcome of this i'm just using the miniature as an illustration here so when you sign on it flat it's going to look really nice for you and then you have something like this so this is the same line and see i used the yellow thread you should sew as close to the m line as possible that's why i use this yellow thread but once you're, when you are doing this you use a matching thread so that your thread your seam line here will be barely seen and then you can also make use of a hemming gum so that it can life really flat and come it down for you okay so i just thought to bring this to the mannequin so that we can see how the collar is lying really well on the neckline because it is curved in a coffee way so you can see what this collar is looking like this is actually a miniature so it's not a life-size dress I hope you enjoyed this if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section and subsequently now once we work with bishop color we don't need to draft it in the video we just make reference to this particular video that we do i'll see you in the next one bye